welcome to episode 38 of Tales from Midnight Diary. My name's Gemma and I'm coming to you this week from a new location, a very special location, the Yarn Dispensary, which is an award-winning local yarn store here in the heart of Kent. Um, it's a very quiet day, it's Monday, the shop is shut, um, Robin is asleep upstairs and um, yeah, so I thought I would pop on and give you a little update about why I've been crafting or not crafting as the case may be for the last few weeks. So I hope you enjoy the change of scenery. Um, I'm going to try out a few different areas over the sh in the shop over the next wee while. I might even do a courtyard um, video <laughs> later on because it's beautiful out there um, and nice and cool. But here we are. So I'm sorry for my absence for the last couple of weeks um, as I will go into more detail in the moving vlog. Um, I have moved. I am living temporarily above the yarn dispensary in a beautiful um, flat uh, which I'm renting from the owners of the dispensary and the owners of the building. So we feel very, very lucky and it means that I get to come to you from this beautiful location. I'm going to be completely honest folks, I have not been doing an awful lot of making over the last wee while. I have been so tired and stressed and making hasn't actually been the creative balm it is for me usually. I'm just too tired, I just want to stumble into bed at the end of the day and collapse into a heap. That said, I've got two hoes and two almost foes to show you. Um, so we will crack on and I'll show you that. And I've also been dyeing, so I've got some of my final hand-dyed yarns that you can purchase at the yarn dispensary. Because um, I won't be dyeing for a, the significant future <laughs> while I'm uh, actually looking for the uh, looking to move into my new home. Um, advent calendars, I don't know if they're going to happen this year. If they are, um, I will put an announcement out once we're moved into our new home and I've got my dye space set up. Uh, there will be a very limited run and I will be dyeing them immediately that I take payment and posting them out immediately as well. So they would land with you in November, ideally. So I just don't want to worry about anything going wrong um, when so much else has been happening anyway. So uh, first of all, I have a little, little hoe for you. This is the um, Fuss Free Vanilla Sock, which is my own sock pattern. It's nothing groundbreaking, folks, nothing at all. Um, it is available for free on my Payhip store. Um, you can also download a copy for free on the Yarn Dispensary website. Um, but I've been making Robin Little Socks and it occurred to me that actually a nice way of having samples for the sock yarns that we stock at the Yarn Dispensary, um, this isn't a Yarn Dispensary podcast, but bear with me, um, would be to make little hose for Robin. So uh, just one sock at a time to show off the colourways and then I'll finish the pair later on. So I have a little collection of mini socks now. So this is the Colourway Run Paradise from West Yorkshire Spinners, retails 8 95 of all, and one 100 gram ball will give Grandad and Robin a pair of socks each. So this is number one. Number two, hot off the needles this morning when we ended up in urgent care, Robin woke up with the, hang on, let me lean around. Robin woke up with the most disgusting eye you've ever seen. Um, he's, he's got conjunctivitis, poor babe. So we ended up going to urgent care this morning because we have only just moved in here in the last, pro well, moved in here a couple of weeks ago, but actually properly moved in and, and stopped living, stopped having our old address earlier this week or last week now, last Wednesday. Um, again, more on my vlogs. So I was finishing this sock there and there you have it number two so this is blue lagoon so again i'm using my fuss free vanilla sock pattern as i said before nothing groundbreaking about it for robin i cast on 48 stitches i do a standard heel flap and gusset my heel flap is 24 rows deep um and i think i do 30 stip rows for the leg because I like a nice long leg, they come up almost to his knees, they're very sweet. And I'm quite proud of my handmade sock blockers. All I did was draw around the sock and uh, on a piece of natty old cardboard and cut them out. But they do the job and they look ever, ever so sweet. So there we are, two hose. And now for the almost finished objects. I'll put that back on the blocker for now actually. I've just cast on another 
what will be a hoe. Um, so almost finished object. Uh, last time I spoke to you, I was starting a flax sweater for Robin. Um, the worsted pattern by Tink Hanitz. It is a free pattern. I was starting it because I was teaching my top down sweater course and I have actually finished the body and picked up the other night for the sleeves but we were having a bit of a celebratory meet and make here at the Arn Dispensary last Thursday. Um, I can't divulge why but there we are. Um, not yet anyway and so I was a little bit squiffy shall we say. I'd, I'd, I'd had a glass or two of the bubbly stuff and I realised as I was picking up the stitches to the arms that working out decreases probably wasn't a good move so I put it to one side but there we are there's the body I've done the two to four and I've actually done it a little bit longer than it calls for as well because Robin has quite a long body the yarn I am using I don't have a ball band is Rowan super pure wool superwash worsted I really love it it's a really good workhorse yarn it does exactly what it says on the tin it's pure wool it's superwash it's got a lovely finish lovely stitch definition my only grumble is there were some issues with the yarn I don't know if you can see that's not a snag or a pull that's just a little break in one ply of the yarn um which has made me a bit sad and it's happened a couple of times in the ball so that's that's a little bit of a, a grumble i guess and i've used um i think i used a ribbed standard cable cast off for there don't think i did a tubular cast off no um but i did do a long tail cast on for the neck i like a big stretchy neck to get it over robin's head with ease so yeah, so I've just got the two sleeves to finish on that one. That shouldn't take me too long at all. Now I'm thinking about knitting again. Uh, it's a funny old thing. I've not wanted to work on any of my current projects, but I've been quite eager to cast on lots of new things. The desire to make new things and to start something new has been quite strong with me these past couple of weeks, but I know it makes absolutely zero sense. The other thing I finished, which I don't have to hand, is my dad's Father's Day socks. As you know, I was going up to Scotland to see him um, last, not the weekend just gone, but the weekend before. And I did finish the socks. However, in my haste to pack, because we had about 200 kilos of yarn arrive here at the Arn Dispensary the day I was flying up to Scotland, um, in my uh, eagerness and the urge to pack, um, I forgot to pack the socks that I bought for dad, made for dad. Um, we were dealing with so much else here. So anyway, this is the Soho top, um, which I did put on little stitch uh, tubes. I've got these tubes from Little Grey Girl, so you can try on your makes as you are wearing them. You just slip them onto the end of your needle and then slide all the stitches onto these tubes. They're ever so clever. Um, but as soon as I got it onto the tube, I realized it was a lot shorter than I'd expected. It actually just comes to just under my bust. So I've got a little bit of knitting left to do and then the neckline, but I'm determined to have that finished shortly for the shop. We've actually got a plant life window at the moment with cotton and linen in there. I would love to have this one in there soon, but there you go, you can't win them all. Can't win them all. So yeah. So those are the projects that I have been working on when I've wanted to work on something, which to be honest, hasn't been much. I did most of the Blue Lagoon sock during a talk on Friday night. Um, we've been having talks at the end of the calendar month here at the Arn Dispensary. And um, my friend Paul Martin came to do an encore already. He was talking about crafting and mental health. And it was such a fabulous evening and it was actually sold out the second evening. We had 20 in-person tickets and it just went. Um, so yeah, it was very nearly standing room only. And I was stood manning the tripod, manning the zoom <coughs> off to one side. And yeah, it was, it was remarkable actually. It was really remarkable. So yeah, I'm surrounded by inspiration. Um, I may well show you some footage, there may be some B-roll in a moment of the shop put to music. Um, I know you've seen it before, but there have been changes because we have lots of new yarns, which is really exciting. Lots of new products. <clears throat> um, it always changes. It's always worth going into your local yarn store because by their very nature, they don't carry an awful lot of stock. So <clears throat> each time you go in there, maybe something different. Um, certainly the case here.
we've got the most fabulous plant life display behind you that I can't really show you without everyone thinking the shop's open so maybe I'll take some photographs later um, so yeah sharing and it just feels very green and organic in here and very exciting at the moment with those beautiful flowers from a local florist next to me as well so that's it really that's all I've been making um I've only brought whips with me works in progress so yeah it's um I've been very good at not casting on anything new and my plan is we're going to be here probably for another eight weeks my plan is to just work through as many works in progress as I can <laughs> um I don't think these count for summer sock camp because they're only odd pairs I mean I think they have to be a pair I don't think they can be odd socks although I'm sure Robin would quite happily wear odd socks we'll see <clears throat> I think I've got two pairs of socks for summer sock camp so far um and yeah I've I, I went to bed last night I actually got into bed once I'd walked the dog so it was about 7 30 in the evening on Sunday 2nd of July I just lay on the bed and my body felt so heavy and tired and I just I lay there with my eyes shut for about two and a half hours and then fell asleep so I fell asleep at sort of a normal time but I just rested and I'm so so glad I did Ooh. moving's hard work <laughs> would you like to see the midnight diary yarns come on I'll show you very unusual opportunity here to see them in situ there we are the new collection they're a bit blown out under the light here but it's my merino tent cell base which has been incredibly popular and we have here iris and hydrangea see the blues and pinks in there and um, that's quite a pale version that one but it is and then we've got rose begonia all the golds and oranges and then one of my customers wanted the inside of a lime so I've tried to produce that and I've done the same with lemon and then there's grapefruit that's hanging upstairs also what we've got here how lucky am I <clears throat> look at this gorgeous stash of stranded dye works um, Jude is our guest dyer for the month it's only here for the month and I cannot tell you how much I want to make a sorrel now I want to make a sorrel in this yarn <laughs> But I'm going to need so much more than we've got. I think we've got three hanks of um, plant parent. But I just I just love it. And this is merino cotton. It's the most delicious base. It really is. Anyway, there we are. So. So that's it, folks. Thank you very much for tuning in. Very, very short and sweet update. But I will be back soon, I'm sure, with a more regular podcast. Please let me know what you've been up to the last few weeks. Any of you been doing anything bonkers? Can I live vicariously through things that you've been doing that's relaxing? Who's watching Wimbledon? I'm going to wrap this up now so I can go up and watch Jokovic kick off the action on centre court. There's a very exciting match between um, a Brit in the women's um, uh, dart, Harriet Dart. Uh, it's it's a bit nail biting actually, uh, so that's happening upstairs at the moment. It's in Wimbledon, but it's on the TV upstairs. Um, yeah, so yeah, let me know what you're up to, and I will see you soon. Bye.